Evening, guys. Hope you're doing good. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Uh, hope you had a, an amazing one. Hope you're fresh, energised and ready to go for a fantastic week. Those catching this, jumping on the live or catching up record. Uh, hope you take a lot of value from it. Any questions that you have going forward on it, feel free to drop me a personal message and then we could definitely take it from there. So going forward into next week, covering the trading week, 31st of Jan through to literally through to February. Uh, fourth Feb there on the Friday, but yeah, let's get straight into it now. As a, as I say, any questions to chat as we go forward, put it in there, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions on that. So, as we do on most of these overview calls, let's take a look at the fundamental side uh, initially, just so we can see what's going on on forexfactory.com. Now, this is a website that I like to use to check all the fundamentals out. So, feel free to actually use that as as a source as well. Now. When we go for it now, let's initially look at obviously what is coming up on Monday. No sort of high impact news that we can see that's highlighted there. Uh, leading into Tuesday. This is definitely right. Yes, fantastic. So, yeah, going on to Tuesday, a little bit of high impact news uh, leading into was like early hours, say Tuesday morning, 3.30 a.m. on the Australian dollar. Some cash rate changes there and RBA rate statement. So that is on Tuesday early hours, and then leading in a little bit later within the day, uh, around the the US dollar session, one thirty PM. There we've got some Canadian dollar uh, GDP high impact news there. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. And then a little bit later within the day, we've got some high impact news again on the US dollar. So that is some red calendar news on that. So that'll be at 3 p.m. manufacturing PMI and some job openings there. So that's something to keep an eye on. And then later on in the day, coming up to around 9.40 p.m., uh, and that's some NZD high impact news on there, employment changes, unemployment rates. So that is something else to also keep in mind there. It could definitely have an effect uh, across the New Zealand dollar. Leading into Wednesday, 1.30 a.m. on the Australian dollar, so someone is speaking there from uh, the Bank of Australia, uh, Govlo, Govlau is going to be speaking then. And then leading a little bit later into Wednesday, well, all day, we've got OPEC meetings. So that is that that is a big one to keep an eye on and monitor uh, some of the other currency pairs on that day. And even going a little bit later now, 1.15 p.m., uh, around the New York open time, the US dollar, that's got an NFP. So, you know, in terms of the fundamental calendar and some of the, the biggest news that is out there, that is one that you do want to um, definitely keep an eye on and observe how the market is going to move around that. I definitely will be cautious about, you know, looking to scale into US dollar based positions around the NFP week. So, you know, just highlighting that there, we could see the market be a little bit thinner this week, a little bit slower across the US dollar pairs. Because uh, we know that some of the big moves that are going to happen are going to really happen towards the end of the week. We're looking at, say, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, maybe a little bit slow on that week there. Got high, high impact news on the Canadian dollar at 8 p.m. on Wednesday. And then Thursday, a um, little bit later in the day. So look, you can see that we've just got a lot of high impact news starting to come in then. Across the GBP as a whole, um, lots of people speak, speaking there, uh, policy, policy summaries, uh, we can see policy reports, monetary policy reports, just, just a lot, just a lot across the GBP. So keep an eye on that on the Thursday, definitely leading out of, say, the London session, leading into New York. And then some more on Euro, that again, leading into New York session. All right, let's come down a little bit more. That's pretty much it. And then on Friday, this is where we get the, the massive shift in the in the NFP data uh, being released across the US dollar, across the Canadian dollar, employment change there, unemployment rates, and then the NFP being dropped on the US dollar, which will be around, yeah, from literally 1 p.m. onwards. That's when you'll be observing what the market is doing. And look at, if you're opening US, USD-based positions, uh, you definitely want to, you know, probably move your stops in profit, cover your stop losses and stuff like that, and even potentially close out positions because we just don't know how that's going to affect the market there. So it's something that more often than not, you want to sit on the sidelines and just watch how the market actually plays out on that. All right, so that's the fundamental calendar for this week. Quite a lot going on on that front. But let's jump into it now. Let's take a look at what we've got on the DXY. So if some of you ultimately don't know what the DXY is. It's something that we can actually look at to observe 
where the US dollar is going overall. Now, there's a few things that we can look at to see what the US dollar is doing. We could look at this one that we have here, the US dollar currency index, all right, which is, all right, is there someone in there? Sorry, champ. Sorry, guys, just picking something up. All right. So yeah, anyone in the waiting room, if you are, I will happily let you in if, if you're there, but I cannot see no one in as of yet. So leading on from that, so you've got the US dollar currency index that we have on that, so we can keep an eye on that. And this is something that we're going to correlate with uh, to some of the other uh, currency pairs like GBP USD, Euro USD, uh, AUD USD, NZD USD. So they're the ones that we're going to look at the DXY. And then when we're looking at some of the other US dollar based pairs, uh, USD JPY, USD CAD, pairs like that, that's when we look at something, say, like the Dow Jones. All right. So diving into what the DXY is doing, we're looking on the daily right now. We can see, you know, just you know, using basics, just look, looking at the trend right now, you'll be able to see that the trend is going up. Yeah. We come down to these lows here and we can pull it up to the highs. So we can see that we're moving in this upwards trend and we, we, we can see this to continue. We would see this to continue just how we're moving at the minute on the daily. And as we you know, zoom into those lower time frames now, it's still painting the picture that the US dollar does want to continue to push up higher. So we can play that to our advantage uh, and we can position ourselves in the market for something like that uh, to really to continue. So I spoke about these uh, liquidity points for a few weeks now we can see that we can be pushing up to these highs here uh, and this high up here we can definitely see that we've got you know we've got money in the market that's held above these level you know we've got yeah literally that we've got money above these levels we've got liquidity here and just if you if you're just covering the basics right now or if you're just using your support and resistance you know we know we've got resistance levels there there uh, and above here so these are areas and price levels that the market want to move up to, uh, to take money and liquidity from there and then, you know, move up, move up further. So that's where we're looking at long term, chasing some of these highs up here uh, and looking to really create that new high high. If the US dollar is obviously going to continue to go up from there. So what I'd like to see probably the early part of this week here, which would make a lot of sense. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, we could have that retracement phase back down. Um, obviously, we had a lot of buys coming into the market here, pushing up quite heavy. So we could see that trail back off now, fill in some of those areas, uh, and then we can actually see the market push away from that. So this is what I'd want to see, something like that. Trade into some of these lower levels and then push away from that. All right. And then that would lead into you know, a high high being created, some of these areas being taken out. Uh, and that could fall in line with what we see on the NFP side um, with, you know, say a positive on the US dollar coming out of that. All right. So that's what's in the DXY. Let's take that over to see what we've got on Euro USD now, as that's something that we can compare as in like a comparison. So more often than not, when we see the DXY pushing up, uh, we can come over to something like Euro USD and see that doing literally almost the opposite of that. Uh, and that is literally what we're seeing now. You know, we was just looking at the DXY. We've, we've seen it, you know, massively, you know, just running up and taking out higher highs. Price was very bullish. And if we come over to Euro USD now, we can see that this has been ultimately selling off. And that is literally because I, I say it most weeks uh, and it's just it just it just works in. It's just in alignment with everything that we see, because look, with this currency bear here, Euro USD, so we see the euro going down slightly and the US dollar picking up. That's going to lead that currency pair uh, to ultimately continue to sell off. All right. So let's look on the daily here now. So some of this is <laughs> where I back, back test some areas. But ultimately, we can see that we could be looking to fill in this area here. We've got an area where just literally buys ran up on this area to create you know, this upwards move. So we could see the market definitely trade into some of these areas, fill it in. And so we could be targeting definitely down here, at least like on the daily. You know, we can see that we have a sell to buy candle there. So the market has pushed down slightly before creating this upwards move. So at least we could see, you know, the market trade down to that level. And if it wants to you know, create a shift from there, we could use that as a, you know, basically a take profit area. So for me to get into something like Euro USD, you know, we had that retracement phase back up. 
let's scale in a little bit now to the four hour and see what's going on there. So we've seen this retracement phase almost grind up and just looking at it from there, at the time, we would probably want to see it push up a little bit higher uh, to take these selling opportunities back down. But as we can see from there, it's trended quite nicely. Uh, there would have been a lot of opportunities over the last sort of couple of weeks uh, to get in sales at these high levels. But what we did see with last week is this just absolutely selling off. Um, so, you know, there was, of course, some trades that were sent out. Jake shared this one on Monday uh, about that Euro USD trade, 1 to 17 from these high points in here. Uh, and that was literally the early part of the week there, just leading into New York. Um, on the 26th, which literally would have been, so that would have been Tuesday, Wednesday, that trade was put out. All right, so that's what we see on EURUSD. For me to get involved in something like that, let's see that retracement back up. All right, let's get a fair value of price where we can get into some of these higher Fibonacci levels, look to literally cover our stop losses above the high, so keeping it super simple, we want to retrace, we want to cover these highs here and then look to at least play down to these equal lows. And obviously we got long term targets on the, the FIB extension, all right, plus on the 27 percent. And then we know out on the daily, we've also got these levels down here. So we could almost be looking at, uh, say, a swing trade on this, obviously not quite a position, but we can see a nice one to ten trade on that, which we could. Uh, cover quite conservatively on a 30 pip stop loss and look to target like 325 pips to the downside if that is something that we're going to hold and get that overall take profit so that's what i'd like to see on euro usd let's scale into the hourly now so you can see you know a little bit more in detail and then we can skip on from there all right so that is what i'll be looking at something like that all right let's go on to gu now this is a pair that we should still be holding if some of you have took profit on this and you're out of the trade that's absolutely fine it's definitely better for us to take profit on trades and not necessarily be greedy but you know when the profits are on the market and the trade's gone in our direction definitely take um, money off the table and definitely cover your stop losses uh sorry your stop profits as we go down with these trades so this is something i'm still holding i want to see i want to see targets down to these lower levels you know 1.32 is a great level that we can see the market go down to. It's a psychological level. Um, it's a quarter theory level that we know banks and institutions like to move the market uh, to these specific zones. Uh, you know, they're not they're not they're not necessarily using fib zones. They're not want to seeing it go to seventy eight point six or these extensions or you know they're saying you know let's let let let's go to these equal lows. You know, they're using psychological levels whole numbers in the market that they can literally set on the trading floor that say look pump x amount of billions at this number and we're going to trade this down to 1.32 you know so these are some of the things that you can start to think about in time and um it's actually quite simple when you look into it you just literally observe where these whole numbers are and you notice what is around that area so some of the basics the support and resistance we will notice at 1.32 there's a lot of support down here. There's a lot of liquidity uh, where they want to move the market to. So that's it out on the daily. So we can easily see 1.32, I believe. And then obviously further down equal lows. And if we look at uh, on the daily, you know, there's no reason to say we can't print a new lower low on that. So it's definitely not unachievable to, for us to see, you know, 1.3000 on that. So, so I'm still I'm still holding it. And obviously from last week, my stock profit on that is literally just above that four hour swing. So, you know, if we can scale into another position on this, uh, yes, last week there would there was some trading opportunities around these four hour highs that we definitely could have got a position on. So for me to get into something like this now, again, it's very similar to what we've seen on Euro USD. Let's see price trade up a little bit higher. You know, we want to get to some of these high levels here. OK, that's definitely not the right tool. So we want to see price trade into some of these high levels. We've got a bit of an imbalance here. New to that terminology just means we've just got almost like a gap in the market where we've just seen this selling pressure. here. So let's get a fill in that area. Let's trade up to this four hour candle so you can see where this one, the blue one's gone up before this going down. So often when these go up before these areas go down, 
or vice versa. So if it was going up, uh, the market likes to move back into these areas, you know, equal out the orders. Because you've got to think how the market is going to move. Uh, they're always going to push orders in to send the market one way. So then they can push it another way. So they like to effectively cancel out these orders. So let's see the market trade back to those levels. Um, let's look at it in terms of stop loss just above the high 17.5 pips. Definitely not unreasonable. We can obviously bring up a little slight more just to cover that on the 18.5 pips, even down to the equal lows. Nice one to eight trade there, uh, 150 pips. And even if you want to hold that on a swing or, or even a position, you could be trailing that again down to 1.3 to 1.3, uh, 1.3 over the next uh, few weeks, really. So that's what we we'll see on GU. It's, you know, I'll be honest on this trade for me, this is one of the biggest trades that I've, I've held on this. And it's um, it's just just opens up a whole new world of trading, really, when you start looking into that position trading and, you know, having your account work for you around the clock. Um, developing that percentage growth which is which is is awesome absolutely awesome um so yeah that's gu nzd usd all right so this is selling off so it just brings me back to it like completely like once you know what the dxy is doing and you can see what the dollar is doing and you align that to the rest of the market it's a game changer it really really is and once i started to really dive into that my, my trading just took a completely different turn because you're falling in line with what the market wants to do. So NZD, USD, similar thing to all of these pairs. But again, what do we want? We want a retracement back up. We don't want to just jump into uh, sales from this level because there is a high chance that we could have that retracement back up. Um, you're not always going to be necessarily so lucky just to just to jump into these, these sales down here and the market continue to fall off. Uh, we know that the market wants to move back up, capture liquidity, take people's stop losses out that are doing exactly that, jumping in uh, very short term. So let's see price move back up. I had this area marked out. I believe this was a bit of a, a gap in the market. It's a lower time frame. So yeah, we had that bit of a, a gap there, a bit of an imbalance the last couple of weeks. So we can see price trade up to that. And even if we fib that up now, let's start on the four hour on the high up here. OK, pull that down to the low. If we start to retrace from that level, you know, it makes sense for us to get back into these price levels. 78.6, 88, 88% on the FIB. That would be a really nice level in line with this whole number here, 0 .7, 0 0.675. Uh, and of course, you know, looking at a stop loss on it, you know, yes, we can be looking at these whole levels. But we want to be observing what price is doing around those levels. Um, because if we don't get the shift on the 15 minute time frames, we don't get the rotations, then that's not necessarily a confirmation just to jump in. All right. So we need more than it just being a fib level there. So this why this area up here makes a lot more sense because we've got the multiple confirmations, we've got an imbalance, got the fib level there. Um, we're covering the stop loss on our highs and, and we're just just aligning with what the market is doing. So that's entered the USD. Euro GBP. So this is this is a good trade, definitely. Like with this, this is something that we have been keeping our eyes eyes on for a few few weeks, and it has given those slight buying opportunities. You know, playing into some of these candles down here and having these short reactions up uh, where we thought we was going to get the shift. Because ultimately, if we zoom zoom out in the daily, those you trading. Uh, Leon Davis type style, you'll see that, look, we've got the structure here. We've got a three touch on the trend line, one, two, three on the daily. OK, so that's a nice confirmation. Now, where have we got our support? We know we've got a level support down at these lows. Uh, but really more than that, we've got areas of liquidity. We've got areas of money where ultimately banks and institutions want to run out these levels before taking it higher. So this is why we're seeing it, you know, grinding grinding down almost um you know enticing people into buying options uh, and buying trades and then ultimately you know somewhat smashing them back down but i believe this is the level uh, that we could have the reaction from i could be wrong we could completely sweep sweep all this liquidity here uh, before we run price higher but i'm liking how we're trading into on the daily again we go back to our candles our institutional candles 
literally means on a simple simple basis we're selling there before price is pushing up so because we're selling there we want to mitigate some of those orders we want to close out the banks and institutions want to get their money back before they move price higher so we traded really nicely into that you know daily open so this is the daily time frame the opener the candle is up here all right so we traded into that even to the 50 percent so that does look good for a reaction now from the, away from that area so we filled that in so let's scale into a little bit now what we got on the four hour so you're into your wyckoff but i won't go into too much but basically this is looking really really good to us all right we can see that we got some we got some resistance here we got some support all right so we trade in in a range format on that we've had the breakout yeah so we swept these areas took the money took the stop losses down here when we had enticing people into buys you know trading it between the range um so we took in all of those out we've pushed price higher uh, and now this looks really good for us to go up higher you know basically swept liquidity either side yeah you know, people buying here they've got smashed out price pushed up here people seeing people seeing selling opportunities they enticed into sales they got smashed out up here price is running up all right it's running up it's running up people buy 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 they all got smashed out now so this looks really good for us to trade away from this level now so let's let's see how price moves this week um continue continue gbp weakness uh will be a massive strength to take this trade upwards uh, and let's just see that the euro absolutely run really clean trade we could be looking at another type long-term swing time long-term swing trade position style trade again on this uh, where we could be targeting some of these highs 280 pips uh, and even if we look on the daily we got some big numbers what you can be looking at we really really have all right structure level there 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 and then next one well, it's all up here it's like 900 pips so i know it sounds a bit crazy and it looks a bit mad on the daily but the levels are there and it's not it's something that we've recently done before you know if we could reach some of these highs up here um rolling literally where was that the start of yeah it's literally the start of last year all right so if we can get it up to some of those highs long term like how, how crazy would that be literally holding a trade uh almost you know may not be a whole year again but it could be it could be a six seven eight nine month trade but you got to ask yourself you know would, would you be willing to do that would you be willing to hold a trade risk one to two percent of your account to gain 49 percent back two percent hundred percent on your account so yeah you may be sitting there right now with a hundred pound account would i hold a whole trade all year um to, to double that to get that to 200 it's not so appealing but think in the future we got 10 grand account 50 grand account 100 grand account wherever it may be and you hold that trade all year you got money working for you around the clock all right so that's euro gbp let's see how we open up i did you know some people did uh just decide to sort of close this out on the friday because we didn't have really much action on it uh, but i thought you know what we're, we're scaled into the position now we got a we got, we got a fairly decent entry on it the price looks good to me so let's see how we open up you know we go from there okay usd cad quickly last two all right so usd cad basically in alignment with the dxy and us dollar pushing up all right so we missed these opportunities on this last week it is what it is there's always more trades um you know we had the had the breakout here massively out of this say look say support sorry resistance support we had the breakout come back very very simple again on break and retest all right so price is bouncing between these levels had the push up come back down so we had a slight breakout but even more we had the break you know this was a resistance so we broke that resistance level we tested it as a newfound support price likes to move to the upside so looking at an entry on this you know we want to scale back down into it we're not going to jump into buying opportunities up here because you know more than likely what i touched them with the dxy we could see this selling off for monday tuesday wednesday potentially a bit of thursday and then building up into nfp on the friday price could push up with the us dollar so that make a lot of sense to me we got we've got those targets that we can be tapping into um structure liquidity again structure liquidity that we can be setting into so nice and easy on the fib start at the low 
pull to the high. Where are we coming back down to? You can see these deeper retracements down the 88%, 30 pips on the stop loss, and I take it up for 270 pips. So that one is USD CAD, guys. Okay. All right, your NZD, we've been talking about this definitely for a lot of weeks. Um, I'm not so keen as, uh, as, as trading it as I was a few weeks ago. Uh, I did have a, a couple of little stabs at it around this area where it looked like it was breaking out and it did and it just shifted back up again. So, uh, uh, you know, I really don't know what your NZD wants to do now. <laughs> I really don't know what it wants to do. But nevertheless, I'm going to keep looking at it and just take it as a learning point and just and just follow it through. So. So what I can see it doing now, it's obviously, you know, this was our area of interest where we was having the reactions from. So on the daily, I could see it playing into this candle and shifting down. Uh, and then I was you know, I was very focused on this area because this is where I, was, I thought we was going to get the reaction from. All right. So we had, you know, ultimately, you know, structure was going down. We had that area up here where on the four hour, we can see uh, these, these buy candles before the sell off. So, you know, we was very close to tapping into that. All right. So I thought, well, we're very, very close to that area. We've, we've you know, we've equaled out some of those orders there. You now we're going to play out some of this now. Okay. Ranging, imbalance, fill that. And then the market had a shift, but had other minds. Obviously, wanted to take orders there. And now I believe we're gunning to equal out orders there or even, even run these highs uh, before we even sell off. Right, before we even sell off and you know ultimately i know it's a bit contradicting and that's even if it wants to sell off and there's no reason to say that this can't just keep running all right it's it's in alignment a little bit like we're looking at euro gbp we want that to push higher uh, so that's something to keep in mind so if we're looking to sell euro nzd but we also want to buy euro gbp so we want the euro to strengthen doesn't really quite match up see what i mean so it's all about correlating different currency pairs and matching and matching them up so to speak so let's see how we move around that area and then we take it from there all right last one gp jpy not one of I've, I've marked up hugely i'll literally be honest but on the higher time frames i still like the selling opportunities on this you know in alignment with you know the gbp getting weaker so this structure is quite interesting on the daily, uh, which obviously price was pushing up. We can see that it's bullish, um, creating that high high, still very, very bullish at this point. Uh, we'll trace all the way back down, but held that structure, sweeped some of these points here, you know, taking the money, taking the stop losses, uh, running price higher from that point. But the fact that we didn't create a high high from this level, this does indicate to me that we're having a slight shift. So, you know, on the four hour now, you know, we're starting to see price sell off. And we're not getting the higher highs and high lows that we had before. We're starting to get these lower lows and lower highs. So this is indicating to me that price is shifting and we know it's shifting because we can see that. Um, so there is selling opportunities on this. This four hour uptrend is grinding up now. So I wouldn't want to take selling opportunities on this until we can get higher up. So if we trade into this four hour up, before this downwards move, um, I can trade it in, up into there. I can cover the highs on my stop loss. And then that makes sense for us to, you know, get into something like that. So we had a 30 pip stop loss down to there. So we're trading, you know, back down to where we had our support. That there straight away, one to 8.5. Right, so that's, that's about 8.5% trade. And if we're looking on the lower time frames around that area, there's no reason to say we can't half that stop loss there. So we could easily get that down to say, you know, 15, 20 pips on that. All right. That increases it to a one to 14. So, you know, that could be TP1. Then we could be looking down here and down here. All right. So, yeah, that's pretty much the currency pairs I'm looking at for this week, guys. Well, obviously, we'll be doing uh, looking over it a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit later, and obviously leading into London tomorrow. So, Appreciate your time for checking out the video and jumping onto this call. Uh, any questions, you know, feel free to, to message me off the back of this and just keep on the trade ideas, chats and everything like that. So, yeah, guys, uh, have a fantastic week in the markets and I'll speak to you all soon.